February 1st, 2021. Public security police storm onto the property of a government-sanctioned church in China's Wenzhou City. Their mission? Toppling a cross from the roof of a church building for a second time. They'd removed the cross seven years earlier, but church members replaced it. Bob Fu is with China Aid, a group that helps China's persecuted Christians. That city alone, we have documented over 1,600 churches with their crosses were being burnt, destroyed, and destructed. And um, many pastors, you know, were even detained, imprisoned. China's Christians say it's the worst persecution against them since Chairman Mao Zedong. To use Ambassador uh, 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 Sam Brombeck's word, uh, it's a war against the faith. I think it's a war against the independent faith. And it's no longer limited to certain regions of China. VOM's Todd Nettleton says this massive wave of Christian persecution is widespread, and it's coming from the national government. What we say in 2021 is that everywhere in China, there is intense persecution of Christians. There is intense uh, efforts to control the church, to bring the church under Communist Party control. The crackdown is affecting every Christian in China, says Nettleton. Protestants, Catholics, government registered churches and unregistered house churches. And the Chinese Communist Party has a new excuse for targeting Christians. Now, under this the pretext of uh, COVID-19 coronavirus, um, the Chinese Communist Party has intensified its persecution by banning all the church activities, even those services or worship uh, or prayer meetings in believers' own homes uh, with their own family members. July 22nd, 2020, a loud knock on the door at the home of a woman in China's Yemen city. She tells the police outside they cannot enter her home without a permit. Moments later, they destroy the lock and enter anyway, breaking up what the government says is an illegal meeting. Fu says it's all part of President Xi Jinping's campaign of sinicization, which means Christians are only considered to be good citizens if they adhere to communist ideology. Despite the suffering, Bob Fu tells me he's optimistic about the country's spiritual future. He says when the Communist Party seized control in 1947, only about one million people in China claimed to be Christian. Today, after 70 years of unrelenting persecution, Christian numbers have grown to as many as 130 million. Gordon? Well, Gary, tell us about the churches that are being targeted by the government and individual families and other small gatherings. What are you hearing about that? Well, you saw the video of them storming into that woman's home. That was back in July uh, as the PSB, Public Security Bureau, did that. Uh, this is a regular occurrence. This happens if uh, Christians meet in homes and the gathering gets to be about 50 or more. That's when the Chinese Communist Party becomes worried because they're unsure what people are gathering for. They want them to be loyal to the state and not to the Bible and to God. Uh, so they get 50 or more, they'll come in and they start raiding these homes. It's a little bit different in California where Christians there uh, were restricted to 10 uh, to gather in homes for Bible studies. I guess they, they can uh, regather now. But it, isn't that strange that it was worse in China? Uh, but that is happening in China today. But Gordon, I think the, the bigger concern is with the uh, early rain covenant church. Now, two years ago, there was a major raid. Over 100 Christians were arrested. Uh, Wang Yi, who was the pastor there, was sentenced to nine years in prison. That happened in 2018, just before Christmas. And uh, the bigger concern right now is they're not out of the woods yet. They're still going in and harassing these leaders of the early rain covenant church. Some of them have been forcibly removed from their homes. There have been pressures uh, put on landlords to pull their leases. Others have had utilities shut off and they're freezing and, and dealing uh, with candlelight rather than light. Well, that pastor's letter that he wrote because he knew he was going to be arrested, that letter went around the world, and I encourage all Christians everywhere to, to read it because it's, it's a blueprint of what authoritarian governments try to do and how Christians should respond. But it's not just the Christians being persecuted. Let's talk about the Uyghurs, yes. the ethnic Muslims in, in Western China. Uh, what, what's going on with that? Well, you've got about 12 million Uyghurs. They're in an area, region of China, they call East Turkestan. They're Turkic people. 
Uh, most of them are Muslims. There are some Christians as well, but the majority are Muslims. And the Chinese authorities feel that uh, they're a threat to uh, the society. They think that all of them are terrorists uh, because they're Muslims, and, and that nothing could be further from the truth. So about one-fourth of them are now in prisons. The U.S. Defense Department says about three million Uyghurs are in prison in re-education camps, and they're being forced to do uh, slave labor. Uh, things like uh, making Nike shoes and, and components for Apple, uh, also Costco products. Uh, these are American companies that are uh, having these products manufactured and they're being subjected to slave labor. So what are we going to do about that? Now also, I've been told uh, uh, by my contacts that they're also being forcibly uh, forced to uh, uh, produce uh, solar panels. There's a big push in the U.S. Uh, to put solar panels in place here. Uh, but many of those solar panels are being produced by slave labor, Uyghurs, ethnic Muslims in China. How, how do we track it down as, as a U.S. consumer and you want to avoid buying products that have this kind of background? Uh, you, no one wants to have anything that was manufactured by slave labor. So. What as an American consumer can we do to influence uh, companies we buy, buy from to make sure they don't have this in their products? What can we do? Well, I hate to say this, but uh, you know, there are a lot of our leaders are saying, buy American. Don't buy Chinese products because you don't know. Remember, Gordon, years ago, there was this push on don't buy the Christmas lights, the twinkle lights, because that's, uh, those are being produced by slave labor in China. So how do you know what is slave labor and what is not? Now, uh, you could have CEOs from these companies go over to China and examine the uh, assembly lines there, and the Chinese would say, see, this is not a Uyghur. Well, it, it's probably a Han Chinese. What, what's the difference there? So it's not Uyghurs. You still have slave labor. And the estimate is Lao Gai. These are the forced re-education education camps, uh, labor camps that the Chinese have put in place. 50 million Chinese, that's the estimate, uh, since 1947 have been forced to do slave labor in these camps. It's still going on today. It's not just the Uyghurs. And this is the subject of discussion right now in Geneva at the U.S. Uh, or the International Human Rights Commission is investigating this in their meetings now in Geneva. And uh, it's coming up. We'll see if... Uh, Anything's done about it. All right. Well, Gary, thanks for joining us today. Sure. You can always get the latest on this issue as well as uh, other uh, stories of Christian persecution. All you have to do is download the CBN News Channel app. Uh, it's available on all those different stores. You can get it for your smartphone, your tablet, and any television. So you can watch CBN News 24 hours a day.